Hi everyone, quick top tip to follow up my 10 interesting things post. Uh, just left the, the woods there behind us and um, a couple of things to share with you or a few things to share with you. Uh, be careful where you're walking because you do spend a lot of time looking at the ground. Vary where you look because, oh good boy, Blue's just, he's got so used to, I'm showing you as if you can see, uh, Blue's just <laughs> laying down on the ground because he gets very bored when I do this. Um, but yeah, vary where you walk because being nature, trees drop the same things round where they are. So that's a nice point to pick up that the reason why everything looks very similar is because of the trees. And if you move to a different place, or a different part of a woodland or a garden, you'll find different things. Um, what else was I thinking of? Oh, the size of them. Try and pick up things that are fairly small for the activities we're going to use them for later. Make sure everything is different. It can be the same thing, like a more than one leaf, but try and make your leaves different from each other as well. Um, I'm carrying mine in a poo bag. How classy is that? I've also been picking up rubbish. It seems that some people who maybe don't normally appreciate the woods have been up and have uh, wanted us all to know they'd been there. So I hope that's not going to become uh, a pattern, but I, I shall bring extra poo bags with me next time. So look out for um, a post following following this up um, on how to use your interesting things but in itself it is such a valuable activity. Oh couple of that was I just remembered something I was gonna say. Um, you might find children just scurry off and collect loads of stuff. If they do that um, maybe think about selecting 10 things from the things they found and that's some great maths in that. I'll talk about that at some further training but also maybe um, encourage them to say, pick up three things from around here and two things from here so that they don't just run around picking everything up and anything up. Um, you know what children are like. So um, I hope that's helpful. Speak later. Morning, everyone. You can tell it's a nicer day because the hats finally come off. Um, I'm walking in the woods of blue. I've just walked to a big hill, so excuse the, the heavy breathing. Um, this is a little maths task for you today um, and I'm going to start it uh, now and then I'll come back to you later. So the simple thing to do is to go and collect 10 interesting items. So preferably, as you can see, I'm just about to go into the woods here, um, preferably collect things that are uh, natural and outdoors but in the event that you are somewhere hot or don't have an outdoor environment go and collect 10 interesting things from around the house and um, you could do that as a separate activity as well because I think when it's interesting things as opposed to maybe things that you like uh, we can end up with some lovely stuff and, and I'll be using the 10 interesting things um, in maths games in some really exciting uh, training that I'm going to be announcing later today. So it's an opportunity for just a small group of you to come and do some official training with me so I can train you in the way that um, I do for a living. So uh, watch out for that, but go and find 10 interesting things. I'm setting myself a challenge now. Hi everyone, this is video three of the three videos I posted earlier today. So the first one was introducing this activity and it's called 10 interesting things. Uh, the second video was some top tips on how to collect the sec the 10 interesting things. And the third one is me having brought them back to my house. So I have posted a photograph of my 10 things and with some questions you could ask. And I've also taken some other pictures which I'll post with a few more questions. But here's a quick game. Excuse the wobbles. So this is very, this is no exactly how you'll be doing it. Um, at home to show the, the parents or with your own children. So what you do now is you choose an item. So for example, I might want to choose, well, I'm gonna choose this leaf. Um, I'm just gonna move the other items gently to one side, so they're very fragile. And then you need to pick another item. So you maybe pick this one here. And you have a look at those two items and you decide what is the same or similar about these two items and what is different. So I'm going to say what is similar, I hope you can see okay, is they're both brown. This one's a slightly lighter shade of brown. But what is different? Well this one's got curved edges to it here and I'm thinking this is more straight. Well there's lots of other things that I could notice maybe when I want to feel it. This one is rough, this one is smooth, so you can come up with more than one reason. Now you have to just change one of the items you choose. Maybe I'll change the first one I had. 
and we'll put another item in. So, I don't know if you can see, you know, one of the reasons I was trying to get you to guess why I might have chosen these interesting objects. This one was lying on the path and it looked like it was showing me the way to go. It just reminded me of an arrow. So what is uh, the same about them or similar? Well, they're both made of wood. And I can feel that I can look that, you know, why our children may not know this. And uh, what's different about them? Well, they're different colours. This one's kind of a greeny colour and this one is brown. This one is much wider, fatter as it were. This one is thinner. This one's got multiple prongs on it. So it's just one single piece. So again, you can change whichever item you want. You might play this with your child where they have an item and you have an item and you put them in the middle and you have to say that so there's a bit more randomness about them. You could obviously group the items and look for things that are similar about them. I'm going to post some pictures about that as well. Um, if you have collected more than 10 items, that is great and that is fine. Get your child to think about how you can arrange them to show that there are 10 items and use your subitizing skills. So as these are at the moment, if you're not familiar with subitizing, I can see there's two here. I can see there's three here, there's two here and there's three here. So I may not know about that that equals 10 yet. So I can just concentrate on the fact that that's a three, that's a three, that's a two, that's a two. But I may know that three plus two is five and three plus two is five. So I've got 10. One of the clearest ways, and this is something I do a lot of in training. So I'm oh, just trying to, it's very difficult to see these and hold the video at the same time. My little fern here is very delicate. So if you just look what I'm doing, I'm, I'm definitely not counting because I'm talking to you. And that's a really important part of what I'm doing here. Um, just take that one there. So I haven't done this brilliantly and I certainly wouldn't start with things that are all different for this, for this mathematical process but I say I will share that with you if you do some training with me. Um, I hope you can see we've got a line of five here and a line of five here. Let's move that down and this is creating what we call in maths a 10 frame. So you've got two lines of five, you've got five groups of two and when you start to use patterns in mathematics it it uh, means you don't have to do any counting. It's a much more accurate way, but I think the word I was looking for, it negates the, the reason to count or the need to count. This is an incredibly powerful thing to do. Uh, I say harder to see when it's objects like this and there are lots of other things I can share with you. So get playing, uh, show me uh, videos, photographs, comments, uh, you know, let me know what your kids thought. Show me the expressions on their faces if you're happy to share things, that would be wonderful. Morning everyone, um, it's an additional video. It is such a gorgeous day here. I'm in Wales, um, you can look at the sky. It's really, really cold, um, it's beautiful winter's day. So you're a little idea for a task here. Um, I know we're all in very different environments around the world, so you know, change things to suit your children, but it's kind of like a treasure hunt. And it's building on one of my earlier videos that I did on my EYFS group page. So go and have a look there. But one of the things I was looking at there was when you're teaching shape, don't start by teaching children to name shapes. Um, this is something that's caused so many problems over the years because the curriculum says this and books say this. I'm just looking, my nose is so red just to clarify how cold it is or evidence how cold it is. Um, but what you need to do is that to our subject knowledge to understand that shapes are called what they're called because they're classified by their properties. So in order to lay the ground for that with young children, we need to do lots of work on understanding what properties are, recognising them and describing them. And this is a brilliant activity for children. When you start to go down this road teaching shape, you will realise or you will, you know, have this massive wake up call that I had of like, oh my goodness, I was literally teaching them to give them a name. Imagine they could have been like the bob shape, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So almost forget everything you've ever learned about teaching shape and let's start again. So the way we're going to do this today is wherever your children are, they're going to get into an outdoor environment of some sort, which unless they've got us like a balcony should be possible. If they can't get out at all, you might have to make this an indoor activity, but only do that as a last resort. 
So list some things that you want them to find in terms of the properties. So go and find something soft. Go and find something with a smooth, a smooth surface. Go and find something that has got edges. Uh, go and find something that has got, oh, I don't know, say something that rolls or something that slides. Don't give them too many things. I'm just giving you ideas. Maybe go and find, give them two properties or three properties. Um, you will see in the other videos I made that young children, um, when they're experiencing feedback that is pleasant, will often confuse smooth and soft because they're thinking about this feels lovely. Um, and that is to be aware of that, don't correct them, just give them lots and lots of experience. But we're leading them towards understanding that that some things have got what we would call flat surfaces and obviously some things have got curved surfaces, some things have got edges. Edges are where those surfaces meet. So you get that feeling of sharpness. And is it a straight edge? Is it a curved edge? These things are you know, appealing to their natural sense of curiosity. They're so much easier to teach and believe me, mathematically are exactly what your children need to learn. So uh, have a go. Um, I'm not quite sure what day I'll post this on. Maybe today, which is Monday. Uh, but, you know, feedback, tell me how you got on and send me some stills of things that your children did or whatever. Okay, take care everyone.